all very welcome here this morning. Shall we start with hymn number 122? Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. A very good morning, everyone. Um, shall we uh, this morning? Uh, shall you? Would you like to be seated for a moment as we call our children forward for our children's liturgy? Any children would like to come forward for children's liturgy? How are you? You okay? Okay. Anything, anybody else? Okay. Olga, no, you're not allowed to come. Okay. Right. So, we ask the Lord to be with you. Today is Christ the King. And so you'll be learning about the kingship of Christ in your life. And, uh, and we ask the Lord to be with you as you journey that uh, today. You've got an exciting morning ahead. I know this what you're going to be doing. So we ask the Lord to be with you. Shall we make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you like to lead the way? Have a good time. Okay. Would you like to stand? Today is the, is the feast or solemnity of Christ the King. We welcome all of our parishioners, um, of course, uh, any visitors we have today. And we also welcome those who are watching online. Um, and we ask the Lord to be with us this day. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. 
glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant we pray that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now listen to the word of God. A reading from the second book of Samuel. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron. Look, they said, we are your own flesh and blood. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led Israel in all their exploits. And the Lord said to you, you are the man who shall be shepherd of my people Israel. You shall be leader of Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king of Hebron, and King David made a pact with them at Hebron in the presence of the Lord, and they anointed David king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. I rejoiced, I rejoiced when, when I heard them say, let, let us, us go, go to, to God's house. I rejoiced when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I rejoice when I heard them say, let, let us, us go, go to, to God's house. Jerusalem is built as a city, strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. I rejoice when I heard them say, let, let us go to God's house. For Israel's law, it is there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. I rejoice when I heard them say, let us go to God's house. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. We give thanks to the Father who has made it possible for you to join the saints and with them to inherit the light. Because that is what he has done. He has taken us out of the power of darkness and created a place for us in the kingdom of the Son that he loves. And in him we gain our freedom, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the unseen God and the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, everything visible and everything invisible, thrones, dominations, sovereignties, powers. All things were created through him and for him. Before anything was created, he existed, and he holds all things in unity. Now the church is his body, he is at its head, as he is the beginning. He was first to be born from the dead, so that he should be first in every way, because God wanted all perfection to be found in him, and all things to be reconciled through him and for him. 
everything in heaven and everything on earth when he made peace by his death on the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to welcome the gospel. Alleluia. 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 Blessings on him who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the kingdom of our father David. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people stayed there before the cross watching Jesus. As for the leaders, they jeered at him. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too. And when they approached to offer him vinegar, they said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there abused him. Are you not the Christ, he said? Save yourself and us as well. But the other spoke up and rebuked him. Have you no fear of God at all, he said. You got the same sentence as he did, but in our case, we deserve it. We are paying for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, he said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Indeed, I promise you, he replied, today you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. A very good morning, everyone. Before I uh, begin my sermon, I just want you to uh, remind yourselves that we are very blessed um, that during the war we had. Um, our Lady Chapel, we have the window of the crucifixion uh, placed in there. And of course, the plaque underneath, it dedicates it to St. Dimas. St. Dimas, the good thief, of course, asking the Lord to forgive him, recognizing, even though in his own suffering, who Jesus really is. So we are privileged to have that painting in our uh, uh, stained glass window in our church in such good order as well. Of course, our feast or solemnity today is Christ the King. And of course, today in our first reading, the second book of Samuel, we hear about King Saul and King David. Now, King Saul was a great king in his own right. But of course, we know that David was a good general and he won many more battles. And so the power a mix of the kingdom was starting to change. People were moving more to be in favor of David being king. So, of course, Saul had to relinquish and let David become king, even though David was young, still needed a bit of wisdom. So there's probably a bit of tension there, not only between um, uh, Saul and David, but between the different camps of favoritism, a bit, a bit of politics going on. But God, of course, chose David. Even if he lacked age and wisdom, he still chose David to become king. This is part of God's great plan. We, are, of course, in our own lives, we share in a kingship. And that kingship we share, of course, is through our holy baptism. We put on Christ when we are we are, uh, of course, died to original sin, and we are reborn in the waters of baptism. We, we put on white, a white shawl around our children, or, or we wear white as adults when we are received into church. And that, of course, shows us we are pure, but also that we have put on Christ. 
we share in his threefold ministry um, sharing. And so, of course, each one of us really are, because we are sharing in his kingship, we are, of course, sharing in that um, glory and that power. So, of course, there's also a remembrance that that baptism is sealed in with the oil of chrism. The oil of chrism is created, of course, at the chrism mass with the bishop and the priests at each cathedral. And that chrism seals in baptism, and it also seals in confirmation, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Chrism is also used over the centuries for, of course, crowning kings and queens. In the 1950s, two great things happened in the 1950s. The first one, of course, was the invention of television. People started to have these black boxes in their rooms with a screen and, of course, lots of, lots of um, workings at the back of them. But they got this grey image that was beamed from different parts of the world. The first great programme on television was, of course, uh, Queen Elizabeth's coronation. No one had been able to experience a coronation uh, experience like it. Only the well-connected and the kings and queens of foreign nations um, experiences. But suddenly, they brought the cameras into the coronation. We saw the holiness. We saw the grace. We saw the majesty. We heard the music. But also, when, please God, King Charles becomes his crown queen in May next year, we will see a crown placed on his head but before the crown is placed on a European monarch's head anyway, chrism is poured on the, of course, the head of the monarch before the crown goes on. Because, of course, in earlier times, medieval times and so on, coronation was treated like a sacrament. It was sealed in. You were chosen by God to lead the people as a king or queen in a earthly realm, of course, in an earthly kingdom, but, of course, chosen by God to serve God and serve the people. So it's not about power and earthly power. It's about service. And Queen Elizabeth um, taking over, just like King David, she took over her reign from her father, a late father, quite young, but she held on to her responsibilities, her holiness, and, of course, going to church and serving the people of Great Britain and the Commonwealth. So there is a, a foundation that's needed for every monarch, and her foundation, of course, like our foundation of our baptism, is Christ. Now, we think of Christ as the ultimate in um, kings because through the incarnation, Jesus came into the world the word became flesh and dwelt among us. But he didn't come, and we wasn't born in a great uh, palace, but in a stable, a borrowed stable. He didn't um, have a great army. He had 12 apostles eventually and a few disciples. He didn't have a great army. He didn't wield a sword. He wasn't a great general. He didn't have this sort of power or glory. But... He modeled himself on his father's love. So he came into the world to teach us love and forgiveness and to serve one another. And that is a good basis for any of us to share in his kingship. For we share it as priest, prophet, and king. So we should use his example of how to live our lives, not the example of politicians, not the example of of. Um, movie stars or famous people stuck in jungles. We should, of course, model our lives on Christ himself. Ultimately, Christ would never be given a throne, an earthly throne. The throne he received and he gladly took was, of course, the cross. The crucifix, the cross became his throne and he was nailed to it. He had no, of course, earthly golden crown but he was given a crown of thorns to receive and of course he, he received those crowns and they jeered spat and slapped him and asked him to play a prophet so of course he did all of this 
and like a lamb to the slaughter, he never opened his mouth. So when we celebrate Easter and Jesus has risen from the dead on the third day as he promised, we should always remember that Jesus is the lamb once slain who now is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is the sacrificial lamb that paid the price for our sins. But now he is seated in glory, in a heavenly kingdom, in the heavenly Jerusalem. And that's what we celebrate today. We celebrate Jesus's, um, of course, he won over death. He won death. He, of course, um, brought light into the world where there was darkness. He, of course, brought forgiveness and peace. He brought love and healing. This is the type of king that we should look towards, aspire to, and give glory to. We have our superheroes, our Spider-Mans and our Hulks and our Iron Man and all these um, storybook superheroes that we watch on TV and read about all the time. But there was a man who came into the world. He was both God and man. And of course, he taught us how to love, how to serve, how to be great in our lives, how to pray to his Father in heaven, and how to share in his glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Shall we stand to profess our faith? Shall we say the Nicene Creed together? I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, honoring today Jesus as universal King, he has revealed himself to us as the crucified one who is full of mercy. For Pope Francis, faithful servant of Jesus the King and of the people of God and of the world, that he will continue to witness to the kingdom of God with tenderness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For children whose lives are vulnerable because of war and repressive governments, famine and poverty, domestic violence and neglect, that justice will be restored to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for, that, for those who are now starting to struggle within this time of recession. We pray that we may all support each other in these difficult times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the ongoing suffering of the people of Ukraine, that peace can be found so that they can rebuild their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the departed, that being reconciled in Christ the King, they will live eternally and joyfully with God. We also remember today Margaret Pearson,
Bernie Brown Bill, whose funerals were held last week, and also Juliet Peel, who will be received into Hassop Church on Sunday, and her Requiem Mass takes place on Monday. May their souls and the souls of all the faithfully departed, through, through the, the mercy, mercy of God, God rest in peace. peace. Amen. We ask Our Lady of Walsingham to intercede for us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus, through his life, death, and resurrection, has brought us into your kingdom. Even now, as we live on earth, help us to live by faith and with love until we are all called to the heavenly home. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us um, uh, be seated as we prepare our um, altar for the Holy Mass today. like to stand up children for me okay oh I have to because you're royal I will uh... so what have you been doing today uh, kingship is that right kingship so I've got a question for you what makes a good king or queen then what sort of gifts do you have to have to be a good king or queen yeah be kind loving caring sharing just you do you not have to be bossy? No, okay. Do you not have to have lots of money? No. Do you not have to have lots of servants and lord it over them? No, you don't have to be like a priest then, no, no. Okay, so of course, what, what do we have to do then as a king or queen? Who's the greatest king or queen that ever lived then? Who do you think the greatest king or queen who ever lived? Jesus, well done, well done. So, um, so Jesus is the greatest king. Did he have a gold crown to wear? What did he wear then? What do you think he wore? Sorry? He wore rags. Yeah. What else? What did he wear on his head? What did he wear on the, when he was crucified? What did he wear on his head then? A crown of thorns, didn't he? So Jesus um, wore a crown of thorns. And we have Jesus here, of course. This is like the resurrected Jesus. And of course... He has a... Where is Jesus now then? 
in heaven. And, and where does he sit? Where does he sit? What do you, where do you think he sits? The right hand side of the Father. You're definitely going to be a priest. Okay. So the right hand side of the Father. So, of course, it's uh, really important that we remember that Jesus um, taught us how to love, forgive, and so on. And that's the greatest gifts that we can have. And what about Queen Elizabeth? Do you remember her? Was she a good queen? Yeah? Because she modelled her life like that, didn't she? She was kind. She wasn't bullying. She didn't lord it over people. I don't think so, anyway. What sort of... Do you think... What, what's the difference between the Queen of England and uh, Jesus, then? What do you think? What's the difference? He's the God of everything. He's the God of everything. He's the Son of God. And the only thing that... What, what was the only thing that Queen had that Jesus didn't have, then? Nice things. No, yeah, nice things. But really, one thing that the Queen loved really a lot, uh, Jesus never had. Money. Money? No, no, Jesus didn't need that. But... But she had that as well. But, you know, guess what she had that Jesus never had? Corgis. <laughs> Jesus would have loved to have corgis as well, wouldn't he? You know what I mean? So, but, well done, children. You know exactly who the king of the universe is. So, shall we make the round of applause for you? Thank you very much. <laughs> We're going to leave him here. No, he's taking me. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, children. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gift of unity and of peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Mass intention this morning is for the second anniversary for the repose of the soul of uh, Samantha Scott. We can keep Samantha in our prayers and all of our loved ones on this, the month of November. Um, of course, we keep Phil, her mum, our welcomer today, um, her mum in our prayers. To lose a daughter uh, is heartbreaking. Um, so we ask the Lord to be with Samantha, who of course was herself a mother and grandmother. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace, and so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated or kneel. Thank you. Eucharistic Prayer 3. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and all those on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Patrick, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Samantha, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away the tears from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of 
of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We should place our hands together and bow to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace amen. Patrick. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Before I cleanse my hands to distribute Holy Communion, let us send a spiritual blessing of communion to those who are watching online. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with our sick, our housebound, and those watching from around the world. Dear Lord, help us to celebrate Jesus' um, champion of success and love in the world, but also the gift of resurrection he has won for us. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have uh, gluten-free hosts as well, if you just let me know as you come forward. And also, if you uh, just wait in your pew and you'll be guided forward, as we have no side aisles, we come in a certain order.
Just uh, one or two notices this morning. Uh, the first one is, if you didn't get one on the way in, um, on the way out of church this morning, there is um, Advent, uh, an Advent wreath for your mantelpiece or your television stand, um, which are um, to take home so that you've got something on display. There's, if there's a few over, take two, because if you want to send one to a mum or dad or relative or what have you, um, because we start the first Sunday of Advent next Sunday, so it would be good if they were all gone by the end of Mass today. Um, also, we have uh, the Walk With Me booklet, uh, a companion for you in your purse, your handbag, uh, your wallet, your jacket. Um, it walks with you um, each day. There's a prayer and reflection and uh, um, an introduction from Bishop uh, Patrick. So they're, uh, they're, they're, they cost a pound and they're available on the way out. If you haven't got a pound in change today, take one with you and bring it back next time you come. That's not a problem. Um, so, uh, but please take them because they, it'll be starting very soon. Um, after this Mass, I'll be going over to um, Hassop to receive the body of Juliet Peel, whose funeral it is tomorrow at Hassop. We also, at 3 o'clock today, um, at Darleydale, I'll be whizzing back to Darleydale to... Um, uh, bless uh, graves, so Darleydale Cemetery, the blessing of graves. We will start, of course, with a small short prayer, and then it will be my honour to, during this month of November, to bless your loved one's graves. So I'll see you there at three o'clock. Um, everything else, uh, of course, we are moving nearer and nearer to launching our heating in the hall, um, our warm space project with other parishes, or other denominations throughout Matlock. Our day is going to be on a Monday, and so you can see on the advert in the bulletin that there is people to contact in regards to uh, volunteering in the hall on a Monday, if you want to bake, because it's good that it's on Monday, because if you want to bake and drop cakes off on a Sunday, for example, ready for the Monday, they'll keep until the Monday. So there's all sorts of things, but if you want to, um, uh, bake for that day, um, if you want to donate books, jigsaws, um, and also donate items for the shopping list. I would also be, of course, last week you received in your bulletin on the back of the explanation form a shopping list so that we can run a, um, of course, a, a food, small food bank available um, in the hall on Mondays as well. So that's starting to feed through. So maybe when you go, to the sh when you go shopping, I know that we're all struggling, um, every one of us is struggling with our bills and so on, but even if you can um, purchase one or two small things um, and bring them through, um, it'll, it'll be, if you drop them off in the porch in the coming weeks, that would be great. Um, also, um, next week we have a retiring collection for um, parishes who are struggling, and also there will be a, an envelope for Christmas flowers uh, to take home for the following week, so you can put your fifty pounds in the in the Christmas flower envelope and so on. Um, keep an eye on everything else. Uh, this coming week, there is works going on at Hassop um, in regards to uh, building works and so on. And also, of course, uh, we have plenty of baptisms because of after the um, uh, after the uh, COVID, um, everybody has had children. So, of course. That's uh, important. I don't know what they're doing during COVID, but they've had children. Um, also, just to say that um, one of my jobs is to keep an eye on your bank account. And um, the HACCP bank account had £1,500 taken out of it last week um, for a bill. And uh, I, looked the, I looked further into it, and I didn't recognise the company name. And the bill was taken out of our bank account, or HACCP's bank account, but it belonged to Glossop. The people of Glossop were very happy that Hassop paid their account for them, but uh, I got the money back. So, uh, so uh, we, uh, we, in the, behind the scenes, we're always looking after your best interests in regards to um, your finances. Let us stand and pray. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray 
that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gift of unity and peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank our altar servers, we thank our welcomers, Amanda on the organ, our cleaners this week as well. Um, could I ask, is there a fair trade stall today? Yes. Yes. Ah. Yeah, there's fair trade. Yeah, there's fair trade. Yes, I know. There's, there's fair trade uh, to pop in for, but there is no tea and coffee today. Um, there's a pirate ship um, in the middle of our hall. Uh, there's going to be a children's party there shortly. So there's no tea and coffee, unfortunately, but there will be fair trade. So go in to get your, your, your of course, your top-up on your things, but also for your advent calendars, your Christmas cards, and so on. And I'm on commission. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. So let us sing the last two verses of hymn number 112. <clears throat>